first I shall show you how to generate wavelets. We have looked at this before as well. The most important uh, function when you are looking at wavelets at the uh, that will that, that is when you are looking at generating wavelets at the command prompt is the wave fun. This is a routine that comes with the wavelet toolbox of MATLAB. As usual, I use a release 2014b. And it also says it returns the scaling functions, but these scaling functions are for DWT, not for not necessarily the ones that we use in CWT. So, let us for example, pick a complex modulate wave and ask for the uh, wavelet and a complex modulate wave does not have a scaling function even in the CWT sense. So, the command to generate the complex modulate wave is C more W A V. You can also directly use the C more wave F, which will generate the complex modulate function for you. We have done that before. So, I uh, suggest that you also look at that option. Let us plot the complex modulate wave rate. We will plot both the real and the imaginary parts. We will make sure that, that we are dealing with column vectors. So, here we have the real and the imaginary portions. The real one is the blue line and the imaginary one is in the uh, red line there and it is shifted in phase with respect to the real uh, part. Otherwise, more or less the shape looks similar. This is the familiar plot that you must have seen many times in many textbooks. The real part of this is essentially the real modulate wavelet. Now, it is also useful to get some information on this wavelet when uh, unfortunately, you have to use a different string to get the information on the complex modulate wavelet. The routine that gets you the information for you is the wave info again a built in function into the toolbox. So, here we have information on complex modulate wave wavelet. I uh, the expression is given we have studied this before f b is a bandwidth parameter f c is a wavelet center frequency and then the family is complex modulate wavelet. The uh, whether there exists orthogonal or biorthogonal versions of these wavelets, uh, as we, as I said earlier in the lecture, the terms or the properties orthogonality and biorthogonality all refer to the D, uh, wavelets that are used for DWT. But mo complex modulate wave is not suitable for DWT, therefore it's not even applicable. It doesn't have compact support. That means it doesn't die down in finite time. It cannot be used for DWT. The complex CWT uh, <coughs> is possible with this wavelet. The support width is infinite. Of course, effective support width is somewhere between minus 8 and 8. So, this way you can obtain information on different wavelet families. Let us look at a Haar wave for example. Okay. So, here we have uh, the Haar wavelet with us. Let us plot the Haar wavelet. The first argument, unfortunately, is the scaling function. So let's rewrite here. So phi, we have psi, and then put. So here is the R wavelet for you. As you can see, it's one up to uh, half, and then minus one for the remain remainder of the uh, the interval, and zero outside this interval. It goes without saying. Now, 
th we showed earlier that this Haar wavelet has only one vanishing moment, which means effectively it has satisfies the default zero average condition. It does not have any higher order vanishing moments. Whereas, a Dobishi wavelet of higher order uh, vanishing, that is higher vanishing moments. Remember this Haar wavelet is a Dobishi wavelet with one vanishing moment. Let us look at a Dobishi wavelet with three vanishing moments and see how it looks like. Now, when it comes to generating a Dobishi wavelet, if you recall in the lecture on scale to frequency, I had mentioned that Dobishi wavelets do not have closed form expressions. Therefore, they are generated iteratively and we shall again learn how this is done when we look at DWT. These are generated iteratively using the corresponding filter coefficients and one has to specify the number of iterations to generate this wavelet and that is what we are going to do. Let us say we go through 12 iterations to generate the Dobishi 3 wavelet. We have done that. So, let us plot the Dobishi wavelet here. So, this is how a Dobishi wavelet with 3 vanishing moments look like looks like. It is definitely smoother than the uh, Haar wavelet, but it is not as smooth as you would expect. So, one could generate for example, a Dobishi wavelet with 5 or 6 vanishing moments and see how the smoothness uh, improves. Uh, as you can see now, a Dobishi wavelet with higher vanishing moments is much more smoother and therefore, if you want to detect discontinuities, discontinuities in the signal, this Dobishi wave is not suitable is, uh, for that purpose. In fact, Dobishi wave, wavelets are not used that, free, that frequently for discontinuity detection, but this wave can be used for detection of Singularities in the derivatives of the signal. So, if there is a if there is a discontinuity, discontinuity, let's say in the third derivative or the fourth derivative and so on, then this is much better suited. Why? Because very simple. When I compute wavelet transform, what I'm doing is I'm correlating the signal features with the wavelet. So, wherever the wavelet at that scale and translation looks very similar to the local signal feature the coefficient is going to shoot up. When I have a discontinuity and I am performing analysis of that signal in the vicinity of the discontinuity with this Dobishi wave, obviously the, co the matching is not going to be very high and therefore, it fails to pick the discontinuity. On the other hand, if I use the Haar wavelet at some translation parameter and scale, the discontinuity in the signal will match the discontinuity in your wavelet and therefore, the coefficient is going to shoot up. So, like basis or like atoms like information. In fact, it may be nice to see how the derivative of this Dobishi wave looks like that is is it also smooth or is there discontinuity. So, you can see that the derivative is also fairly smooth. This shows that the wavelet has one vanishing moment at least. In fact, uh, this the <coughs> two vanishing moments because if it if it was discontinuous, then it would be having only one vanishing moment. In fact, we can evaluate. Let us say uh, uh, say the third or fourth derivative of this, and see at what point it becomes really discontinuous, right? So for for instance, I can generate uh, a Dobishi wavelet with two vanishing moments.
So, this is how a Dobesche wavelet with two vanishing moments looks like. It looks definitely much smoother than the uh, uh, smoother than the regular Haar wavelet, but it is obviously not as smooth as the Dobesche wavelet with six vanishing moments. So, it is clear now that higher the vanishing moments, more uh, smooth is the wavelet or more regular is the wavelet. The regularity is something as I said earlier is in qualitative terms. We feel we can have a qualitative feel of what is regularity. We know all of uh, we know this, but there are quantitative measures such as Holder's exponent and Lipschitz uh, exponent which quantify the extent of regularity. So, let us look at the derivative of this and see if the derivative of this is discontinuous, because this has two vanishing moments unlike the Haar which has only one vanishing moment. As you can see the first derivative itself has discontinuities in it, right. And we should expect that, because the original wave has two vanishing moments. By differentiating, we have gotten rid of one of the uh, vanishing moments. And now, this derivative of d b 2 has only one vanishing moment. So, this way it is clear now why this wavelet that is d b 2 is suitable for detecting discontinuities in the derivative of the signal. The derivative of the wavelet has a discontinuity, therefore, it can detect the discontinuities in the first derivative of the signal. Right. So, I hope now with this you are more comfortable with the concept of vanishing moments and have a fair understanding of how this vanishing moments is related to the smoothness of the wavelet and its suitability for detecting discontinuities in the signal and its derivatives. Once again you can obtain information on each of the wavelets that we just looked at. <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, there is a general information on Dobesche wavelets. You can go through this. It is suitable for DWT and it is characterized by this order n which is a number of vanishing moments clearly says d v 1 is hard and it is uh, it can with the Dobesche wavelets you can generate what are known as orthogonal wavelets or biorthogonal. It has compact support clearly it dies down in finite time and it is suitable for both CWT and DWT, but rarely do we use Dobesche wavelets for CWT Maybe occasionally in singularity detection, but that is about it. And its support width is 2 n minus 1 this is a point that I was main, main, uh, mentioning earlier that Dobeshi showed that there exists a connection between the vanishing moments and the compact support that is extent over which or the width in time over which the wavelet exists. If I have a wavelet of vanishing moments n, then it has to have at least a compact support of width 2 n minus 1. This is what Dobeshi proved and we will look at the result in more in detail in DWT, but what this tells us is as I want the uh, uh, wavelet with higher and higher vanishing moments, I need to tolerate wider and wider mother waves. So, d b 1 will have the least compact support that is n equals 1. So, the support width is 1 interval 1. If I have a d b 2 then the support width is 3 and if I have a d b 6 then the support width is 11 and so on. So, we can uh, go back and see if that is the case for d b 2. So, if you can see here the support width that is effectively where the wavelet is non 0 is around this interval here 0 uh, effectively it is 3 right. So, you have 1, 2 and 3. So, exactly you have between 0 and 3 that is what this result says. Whereas, with a Haar wavelet, you can see that the Haar wavelet exists for a much shorter interval. Once again, this is to show you the connection between the vanishing moments and the width of the 
effective width of the support of the wavelet. In fact, we do not say effective here, it is exactly the width of the support. As the vanishing moments increases, the wavelet needs longer and longer duration to vanish. In fact, now you can imagine the extreme case being a sine wave for example. A sine wave which is a Fourier atom exists infinitely over time. The question is how many vanishing moments does the sine wave have? Can you take a guess? Well, the answer is infinity, right. In the sense uh, you can <coughs> actually it, it is very, very smooth, it is a highly smooth, it is continuously differentiable. Therefore, it has a number of vanishing moments which means the sine wave is not suitable for detecting discontinuities and that is where you run into Gibbs effect and so on. Right. So, all of that now makes sense with the property of uh, vanishing moments. So, I invite you to explore other wavelets in the uh, family. There are not only the Obishi family, but there are many other wavelets that I have not demonstrated, but hopefully this demonstration has uh, given you enough foundations to go and explore other wavelet families. There is also a GUI version of the wavelet toolbox, which is brought up by typing wave mngr, oh sorry, uh, wave menu, and this wave menu brings up this window for you, where which allows you to perform many things. In fact, all the things that you can perform with the wavelet toolbox at the command prompt, you can do a discrete wavelet transform, continuous wavelet transform, you can perform signal estimation, signal compression, you can perform multi wavelet analysis. You can also generate different wavelet families uh, at the top bottom uh, at the bottom right here, just above the bottom right, you have uh, the uh, wavelets, you can display wavelets and you could choose your wavelet uh, families. For example, if I want to plot a Haar wavelet, this is how the Haar wavelet looks like. On the right, you have in the green the Haar uh, wavelet and on the left, you have the scaling function. And this way, you can generate many, many uh, different wavelets. For example, I can generate a Daubashi wavelet here. This uh, tells me the number of iterations. So, here is how the Daubashi wavelet of a high vanishing moments order looks like. Uh, and we have, I am just showing you what we had done earlier as well. So, this is a Daubashi wavelet of vanishing moments too. So, you could do that all of this with the click of a mouse as well. So, I invite you to also explore this GUI because uh, it saves quite a bit of time and allows you to spend more time on the analysis. Of course, you can export these uh, wavelets to the command uh, works uh, command space or command workspace and there you can perform whatever calculations you want to make such as the average being 0 or not, how many moments and so on. Okay, so, hope you really enjoyed the lecture on this different types of wavelets and how you could really display the uh, calculate this wavelet, generate this wavelets in MATLAB and particularly the relation of the vanishing moments property with the regularity and the extent of compact support of the wavelet. So, see you in the next lecture, which will be the concluding lecture for the continuous wavelet transform. We shall look at, as I mentioned, three different applications of the CWT. One is in discontinuity detection, the other is the uh, instantaneous frequency and other uh, extraction of time varying features and thirdly filtering using inverse CWT. So, see you in the next lecture. Bye.